Okay, hi, this is Jim with Tips and Tricks again on uh, different types of antennas on your vehicle. As you've probably noticed in my vehicle, I have uh, four antennas across the bull bar and another couple of antennas on the back of the vehicle as well. And uh, after I've shown you some differences between antennas and how to mount them, or where to mount them, I'll actually explain what the difference of my antennas are. Okay, this is an old 27 meg antenna sitting here, this one here. That are sitting in the middle of the bonnet, in the middle of the boot. It's a magnetic base. Now, this one here is a UHF CB, one of the 80 channel ones, the new 80 channel CBs, or the 40 channel, doesn't matter, they're both the same. Okay, now, what I want to do is explain to you the differences of when you put an antenna like that, it's in the air, it works fairly well, um, you won't have much trouble with that antenna, not much trouble at all. But if you come along now and stick, it doesn't matter whether it's a CB, a, 20, a UHF CB or, or a um, mobile phone antenna, and you stick it on like that, right next to it like that, you're going to have nothing but grief. Um, you'll have trouble with the, the radio, whether it's CB, UHF or 27 megas. You'll have trouble with the radio, that'll detune the antenna no matter what you do. And you'll have trouble with the phone. Because the proximity of both antennas, you will actually have an overload. And uh, you'll probably overload the front of your phone and desensitise your phone and possibly blow it up. So don't do it. The further apart it is, the better it is. A rough rule, which is not 100%, but it does work, is the length of the antenna, and you put them that far apart or more, you will find you'll get a better single you'll get a better operation out of the unit. The best place to put your antenna is in the centre of the roof, way up here. But I think we all know when we're travelling in the bush, an antenna up there is not a good place to put it because um, when you get out of your car sometime during the day, you find it broken <laughs> because you hit a branch or a tree or something like that you didn't notice. So over the years I've discovered the best place to put them is on the bull bar when you're in the mountains in the high country where there's timber um, on the bull bar where you can actually see the antenna and um, if, if you have a habit of being able to see it you have a tendency not to run into trees with it and break it off uh, it gets bloody expensive breaking them off and uh, believe me I've broken more than one off over the years notice in the front of mine I've got four antennas now each one of these antennas is for a separate use the one on the left here, this one here it's the UHF CB. It's about a 6 dB gain one, and uh, I find it works very, very well. This one here is the mobile phone one, my G3, G4 mobile phone antenna, and uh, I've actually put some more heat shrink over the joint here to strengthen it. I've done that with that one too. I do that quite often. I put more heat shrink on them because diesels, dirt roads, and corrugations destroy antennas. So, okay, there's the mobile phone one. This one here is the HF radio. At the moment it's got the Flying Doctor or the 737 network aerial on, but I can swap the aerial over to the other aerial. This one here is an amateur antenna. We're two and 70 centimetres, and uh, if you had your foundation licence you could use one of these. And uh, if you do, you, on two metres you'll have a lot more range up in the mountains than you do on CB. So okay, now let's, let's get down to the grits of it. Each of my antennas has, has this little black block on it. This little black block is actually called a ferrite. And um, if you hunt around on the web, you can find these coaxial cable ferrites. Um, they're about two bucks each, and they're well worthwhile. And what they do is you put them on each coaxial lead at the base of the antenna, and it will stop interference from one unit to the other, any feedback down the coax and so forth, which is what's so bad for your radio. Now, these... Uh, lead lights are a bit of a problem too, they uh, generate RF and uh, you have to put a, 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 a I've got a couple of these uh, ferrites on the leads on the lead lights as well. Okay, now let's go from there. Now let's, let's say now, this is my car and I've got the CB aerial up there and I want to I put a, a CB aerial on and it's not there and I come along and I've seen so many people do it, they put it on like that. Now, what you might as well do 
if you're going to put an aerial on the front of your four-wheel drive like that, is pick your radio up and stick it in the microwave and turn it on because it'll stuff it quicker and it's easier and you don't have to have that rotten smell of smoke in your car. That's the best way to blow your radio up or your phone or any other thing. Number one, it'll, it'll interact with the other aerials around it and the bars, it'll interact with them and it will not have any efficiency whatsoever. So whenever you're putting antennas up, always look for the largest possible space you can get. This is not preferable on the front bull, bull bar because of the HF frequency and the uh, wavelength of the frequency. But what I've actually got, and I'll show you in a second, uh, a little bit of a trick. What I do, if I'm in the mountains, I have it set up this way. If I'm using the HF, I'm not using the HF, I whip the aerial off, stick her in the tube at the back and I don't, don't have it up there. If I'm not using the two metres, I whip that off, put it away as well. UHF CB, I don't think I've ever taken that off. But what I do is I've got a couple of little tricks that I do, and I'll show you what these tricks are in my vehicle. And uh, if you're curious, that pipe there has got the uh, spare antennas and so forth for different frequencies that I use when I'm away. But this thing here that i got my hand on, this is the automatic tuner for the barrack. Now, uh, this automatic tuner, the Barrett is, is uh, set up to work on amateur bands as well, which, uh, which you can do when you've got an amateur licence, as well as the 737 network and, the, and the, uh, a couple of other four-wheel drive networks that occasionally I'll take a licence out and use for a while. Uh, the auto tuners are pretty good, but the problem is with the auto tuner is I don't want it down low. I want it up as high as I can to get the best out of it. So what happens is, when you put the aerial on here, the aerial on here is, is about um, uh, 3 metres long, just a bit shy of 3 metres long, I think it's 2.8 metres or something long, the stainless steel whip. Now, you're already 2 metres off the ground, you stick another 2 metres above there, it's well and truly going to hit all the power lines on the street and kill you, and blow your radio up, and it's going to cause all sorts of grief. So, I don't have the antenna up there when I'm in the city. Or, where, or when I'm in the mountains. I don't use it up there. I use it out there in the desert. Because the old-fashioned rule with antennas is height is might. The higher it gets, the better it is. Now, next door here, I've got another antenna holder. This antenna holder, I actually use the fan park whips as the one I've got on the front. That's the 737 network one. And uh, with those antennas, you've got to move the tap, which is a little wire on the antenna. You've got to move it up and down to different places for different frequencies. So what I do quite often, is I'll put a second antenna on here, connect them all together, and I can flick the switch in the radio and work the 737 network on the frequency that's set on it, and then I can go over to the amateur band on the frequency that I've set on this antenna, and uh, I have both antennas hooked into it, and it just automatically picks up the right antenna and away it goes, and it works quite well. It's a lazy man's way of changing frequency without getting out and changing antennas. But uh, I only ever use these points up here when I'm out in the bush, uh, in the desert, and uh, that's the only place I use them. And uh, if you're curious why the yellow light's there, is that <laughs> when I got the vehicle that was on there, and I was going to take it off, but I thought about it for a while, and I thought, nah, leave it on. If you're driving at dusk or dawn out in the desert, it's good to have a yellow light flashing, it's a bit safer. Uh, with these um, lead lights, as I said before, um, I have these uh, ferrite suppressors on them. The ferrite suppressors actually quieten the noise down and, and stop them interfering in the radios. So, when you're putting an antenna on, make sure you keep it away from other things. This is Jim's tips and tricks. How to put it, or where to put antennas on a vehicle. And um, if you want to ask any questions about any of the antennas or etc., um, I'm quite happy to try to answer you on YouTube. Um, just, just leave a question there, and if I can get back to you, I will. And uh, if you're a bit worried about the question being a bit stupid and you don't want the public to see it, Fine, just tell me that and I'll delete it so no one can see it and I'll just answer you. So, no trouble at all. I'm quite happy to do it. Remember, if you have a foundation license, which is fairly easy to do, the course, you know, the license itself is fairly easy. It's only a couple of day course. One day you do the, uh, the learning of the, course, of the foundation license and the second day you actually sit the exam. If you have a look on vk3kid.org, the website vk3kid.org, you'll find all the information you need to know about a foundation license. 
And if you're using two metres out in the desert or out in the mountains, you'll find it goes a lot further and you can talk to each other a lot further apart than you can with the UHF CB. OK, this is Jim. Hope you have fun. Hope to meet you in the bush. And uh, without getting too heavy into the system of how antennas and dB gain works, this is a little uh, diagram of a 9 dB and 3 and 6 dB. You'll notice that the 3 dB has a small circle and um, the 6 dB has a balloon out to the side and the 9 dB has a narrow boom straight out. The 9 dB or higher is good for the mobile phone antenna because you'll sit on top of the hill and use the mobile phone and uh, you don't drive around with the mobile phone working. But with the CB, the UHF CB, you are much better with a low DBD gain and I'll show you why. As you can see with the 3dB gain antenna, it actually has a tendency to go over the top of the hill and down the other side, and you can talk the vehicle down the other side. With the high dB, it goes straight off over the top of the hill and off it goes into the distance, which makes it good for the mobile phone with a higher gain, if you sit still at the top of the hill, but very bad for the CB. Remember, low gain for CB, high gain for the phone. So this is Jim's tips and tricks. Hope to see you out in the desert. Have fun setting your gear up.